Okay, and we're back for part two. So now the uh, pressure cooker has cooled down to uh, probably about 40 degrees or so. It's not gonna kill yeast when you add it to the yeast slurry. And um, we have the glasses that are now been sterilized. What I'm gonna do is reach in and just close the lid that are in there so that we'll keep them sterilized. Go. We can pour out some water and close it up. Now we have all the water that's in here that's been first filtered to get out chlorine, chloramine. Um, then it's been boiled. It's now sterile, or it was before I opened it. Now we're going to go ahead and pour that into the fermenter. We're not pouring all of it, but enough to be able to dilute it a bit. About probably as much as we have in there of yeast slurry already. All right, we'll go ahead and stir it around a bit. Try to get all that yeast to blend nicely. Then the idea is that once we pour this into the glasses, we will put it in the fridge and it will separate into different layers and we'll pour off the water and be left with cleaner yeast. All right. We'll take the pressure cooker, move it out of the way. And put the glasses over here. All right, these two I marked that they hold about a liter and a half each. This one holds about 800 milliliter before they overflow. So we'll go ahead and just fill one at a time. Okay, next thing now is just to put these in the fridge, leave them for a couple of hours and then come back. And we're back for part two. Now we're gonna take the yeast out of the fridge. It has separated into two different layers. It uh, might be hard to see here, but it actually might be three. You have one layer of liquid up on top, then a thicker, the level and then this creamy one below. It really is that creamy one below there that we're looking for. They say it's supposed to look like hummus. So what we do now is take the yeast, spray the container with a sanitizer 
and then we're going to pour off the liquid. Okay, I got down to where we have the majority of that creamy uh, yeast that's laying underneath. From here you can go ahead and add water one more time and do this multiple times, but just remember every time you open the container, you are increasing the chance of contamination. We'll go ahead and do this one one more time. go all right then just shake it up okay from there just wipe it off and put it back in the fridge once that has sat there for uh, another couple of hours and it's separated into layers you can then go ahead and either just store it under some um, um, wort, some fresh wort, like this. Or you can go ahead and do some further tests on it, which is what we're going to do in part three. We're going to test the uh, viability and the uh, vitality. Then note it down on the paper, document it, what, from what beer it came from what type of yeast it is obviously, how old it is, and uh, then post that on the container itself. So now, the yeast have been sitting in the fridge uh, for a second time, and has stratified again. I did not wait exactly two hours or three hours like we talked about previous, but it has separated again. So now, just for going over the procedures, what you would do is spray down the outside, open it up, gently pour off the liquid layer. Then if it's going to go for storage, you can store it up for two weeks in the fridge. But to keep the vitality up, what you want to do is to store it under, well first the layer of CO2 but also under some wort. So what we're gonna do is open up this wort that I have st sitting on the shelf. And then carefully pour some from here over to there. Oh, this was in a vacuum. All right, now with a lid like this, you don't need an airlock because it doesn't get tight enough to where it won't off gas. But if you're gonna keep it in a different container that is like a keg, for example, you wanna have a way for it to off gas. So put it a uh, blow off tube into a sanitizer or something like that. And then maybe once a day go by and shake it because CO2 is the enemy for yeast. So if you can off gas it at least once a, a day, it will uh, store better, it will uh, be healthier yeast. So before I go ahead and store it, I would check with on my microscope the vitality and the viability of the yeast. And then note on the side here, what kind of yeast it is, what day it was collected, from what beer it was collected, and um, store it in the fridge two to four degrees and maximum of two weeks after that the viability is going to start dropping off dramatically 
that's it for storing yeast and collecting it from slurry. Thanks.